Thanks for your support as a channel member, Kim Daniels. Got a double whammy of awesome lined up for you today as we get to meet our January transfers. There might even be one more that I squeeze through during the episode. Plus, we play Manchester United in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 10 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have that FA Cup fourth round tie away against Manchester United, plus a league game at home to Middlesbrough. Since you were last with me, um, we've had a really rather pleasant January so far. As you can see, December was miserable. January has been awesome. I said it would come. We played all the good teams. Now we're playing all the not so good teams. It'll be interesting to see how we fare against Manchester United, who I hear are quite a good team. Top of the Premier League. Um, still got Solskjaer as manager. Shall we see what transfers they've done over the years to get them to this point? It's always interesting having a look at a big Premier League team to see what they've been, to, especially one that I've managed. If you haven't watched that series yet, you should go and check that out. I don't know why the finger's out. It should have just been a thumb. Um, but it's interesting to see how his transfers, as in his, as in Solskjaer, differ, differs to mine. Um, he's not signed anybody I signed. It. Did he sign enough midfielders that summer? Goodness me, who's he sold? Surely Pogba's gone to just... Ah, yeah, there you go. Pogba's gone. He's replaced him with three men. Um, he is... I mean, people said I was spending silly money at Manchester United. Can I just point out, £248 million that summer, £226 million that summer. I mean, he spent £95 million there, £104 million there. And similar to me, just clearing out all the deadwood and throwing money around. It's the way to manage Manchester United. Another £242 million that summer. Um, only £178 million that summer. Obviously, most recently, trying to hunt for bargains. In fact, who on earth is... Ke he's, he's signing new gens already. He's building for the future. £32 million new gens now. Goodness me. Resigning re Memphis to pay. That was the one thing people kept telling me to do. But clearly, I didn't. He did. We're going to lose to them, aren't we? But let's not worry about their transfers. Let's focus on our transfers because we have had quite a busy January so far. As you can see, we did a couple of pieces of business of our own. Um, Aidan Marsh, who was a young striker that we had, whose contract was up in the summer. Blackburn were willing to give us £300,000 for him, so we've let him go. He only had three-star potential. I wasn't that worried. Similar situation with Jack Walton. Um, the guy who I did play on my first day in charge of the club and he never played for me again. Um, he's gone to Watford for 62000 another one who was out of contract at the end of the season and had dropped down to be our third choice goalkeeper. Um, the majority of these transfers you already met. I've got a piece of paper in the way. The majority of these transfers you already met in the last episode. Woodman, Triore, Tanganga, you already knew about. Um, so the only other two I brought in. Mike, Mike Trickett-Smith, who's a young defender who's really coming for the future. £200,000 um, with a load of potential. And then I've massively overpaid for this guy but mainly because I need him, because as you'll see in a minute, we use a 4-3-3 a lot of the time now, and needed another defensive midfielder, and although this guy absolutely wasn't worth £3.7 million, he was the only player who was available, and what I learnt from the summer, with the centre-back situation we got ourselves into, is sometimes if you really need a player in a specific position, sometimes you're just going to have to pay what the market dictates you have to pay, even if it feels like a lot of money. So we have overpaid for Leighton Clarkson, but he can play central midfield and defensive midfield, um, and he's he's better than Equa Olimbi in that position. So fingers crossed he'll come in and be awesome. Um, has been playing for Fulham earlier this season, formerly of Liverpool. We do still have a little bit of money to spend. Not a huge amount. There have been offers for players as well. We had a £10 million offer from Derby for McGeehan, which I was very, very close to accepting, even though he's been one of the best players in the Championship this season. He's 28 years old. You can see he's still third best for average rating. He's 28 years old. And if we look at our midfielders, yes, he's the best one, but we now have Moa, Rinamotta, we've got Slatter, we've got Traore, who we've just brought in. Um, we've obviously got um, Clarkson, who we've just brought in. We've got Finley Robertson. Um, there are a couple of decent players in our youth system as well. Um, I don't know where he's gone. There was a guy called Aziz, who we've had for a couple of years, who isn't quite ready for the first team. Perhaps I moved him up to the first team squad. Was he on there? Um, perhaps I did move him up. No, have I just lost him? Where has he gone? How do we get to the under-23s now? He's definitely around somewhere. 
Um, there you go. Miguel, Agui, uh, Miguel Aziz is a 20, 21-year-old Nigerian under-23 international. Only two-star current ability, but has lots and lots of potential. So we do have a lot of good young midfielders. So I think if we were... The the main thing with McGeehan is obviously the, the offer wasn't big enough. He's worth £10 million. They offered, I think it was like £9.5 million for him. If they came back and offered £15 million, I think we let him go for £15 million. Um, but I don't think we're letting him go for £10 million when that's his actual value. And we don't need the money, especially because we're probably going to bring some money in um, from this Manchester United tie now. Although obviously our projection with all these transfers we've been doing... We might need the money soon, but let's not worry about that for now. So, Manchester United game. This is the system we use. Now, Clarkson's actually making his debut for us at Old Trafford. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. Just switch Clarkson back to a defensive sweeper-keeper. Woodman, we play as an attacking one, but he's cup-tied for this game. Um, so, Hilson comes back in today. So, we've got Hilson in goal. A back four of Burke, Stevens, Diaby and Williams. Clarkson at the base of the midfield. Riminotta and Traore ahead of him. Lots and lots of running there today. That's what we've got from these two. Both McGeehan and Moa on the bench. What what am I doing? Exactly. Uh, Chong and Brown then supporting Brivio up front. So, uh, yeah, it's... It's not necessarily an eleven that you would expect us to play. Um, lose it. No, no Hornby, no McGeehan, no Mowat. Um, but it's it's a system that has been working with these players. So obviously Clarkson's the exception. That Equilimbi has been in ahead of him um, in recent matches. Um, obviously because Clarkson wasn't here yet. But now Clarkson's here as a proper playmaker in that defence. I want a playmaker there and then two very energetic runners ahead of him. That is not ideal. Four minutes in, Chong has got injured against his former club and Hornby is going to come on and play as an inside forward. We've actually played him there quite a lot recently. I know there's probably a, an argument for playing Brivio there, but Brivio just seems like more of a goal threat up front um, and Hornby has kind of been relegated to second-choice striker and occasional left winger for the time being. I'm not by no means saying that's going to be a permanent change, but at the moment, Brivio is the man in possession when it comes to playing as centre-forward, and he will continue to play there today. Manchester United with Mason Greenwood up front, who never really made it into my Manchester United team during the beta this year, but then that's because he wasn't very good for me. Simple as that, really wasn't any good they they have they have variable potential abilities which people really struggled to get their head around not a lot of people some people really struggled to accept that my version of greenwood perhaps wasn't as good as some other versions of greenwood and it looks like in this save um there's a good version of mason greenwood that has appeared at manchester united as opposed to the one that i had who we sent out on loan i think to did he go on he went on loan somewhere in the championship i feel like it might have been stoke um, and didn't score any goals for them either. So he just wasn't any good. Um, we should, well, we might check in on that Manchester United save again one day. Who knows? Not today, though. Um, and Memphis Depay has put Manchester United 1-0 up after 16 minutes. The key for us today is we don't want to get too embarrassed because we have been in good form. Yes, we obviously are expecting to lose. As you've just seen, Manchester United are dominant best team in the country by a mile they're throwing money around they uh they're just a very good football team so we can't ex we're not expecting anything other than getting beaten but we don't want to lose eight nil or anything silly like that because that's then gonna that's then gonna cause us issues when we come back into the league and try and pick ourselves up for the Middlesbrough game that we've got in a few days and with this good run of form that we've been in, we do actually find ourselves just hovering outside the playoffs again as we enter February and genuinely having a little look upwards, thinking there is a chance we could we could have a second half of the season promotion push again. But it's not going to happen if our confidence is ruined by getting absolutely smashed by Manchester United. Um, Greenwood is in here. We've got Diaby chasing after him and Hilson makes a very good save. Hilson... He's going to feel like he's got a lot to prove today. Obviously, didn't necessarily, didn't necessarily. I mean, he did have a couple of absolute howlers, uh, but by and large, he makes a lot of good saves. He d he seems like a decent keeper for this level, but obviously, we've signed Woodman in to come over the top of him, and he's going to presumably feel like he wants to wants to prove a point that perhaps he should be getting opportunities as well. 
Um, Clarkson has got himself injured now. £3.7 million. Pounds. That's the last we'll ever see of him. Equarolimbi can come on into that role. I need to shuffle that midfield around. Him as the playmaker isn't ideal. I probably should have brought McGee and Omoa on and maybe dropped Traore back. I've, I've made that decision too quickly. You probably could have dropped Traore back to the holding midfielder and and then had a playmaker further ahead of him. It's a little bit late now, and Hilson saved a penalty. And boys and girls, as we approach half time, although we have been comfortably the second best team in this game and our players are dropping like flies, we are still in it. And we've just had a penalty save. And now it's Hornby trying to get the break on. Plays it forward to Brivio. He has players up supporting him. Brivio back to Ekwarolimbi. That's a really poor pass. And that's my substitution is a direct result. That led to that directly. It shouldn't be an Ekwarolimbi in that position. He's a centre-back who can do holding midfield. He's not a midfield playmaker. You should be getting involved in attacks. And Greenwood is in and Hilson makes the save again. Four clear-cut chances and one half chance now for Manchester United. We've had one shot and we missed. But the important thing is, it's still only 1-0. But now Diaby's picked up a knock. We could we could potentially have to make our third substitution at half-time here. All of them forced by injuries. Hilson's had such a good game, though. Um, he is, he's keeping us in it, probably more than anybody else. But we need to have a little look at Diaby. Um, yeah, just keep telling them they're the underdogs. What's up with Diaby? Diaby has a hand injury. I think a centre-back can probably play on with a hand injury. Um, we don't have new centre-back man whose name escapes me at the moment because he's also cup-tied for this game, I think. I think that's the reason he's nowhere near the squad. Of what, unless I've just forgotten he exists, but we don't have a... I mean, I guess Equilimbi could go back and play there, and that then does allow me to get McGeehan or Moa on. So there's, there is a, an argument for that change. Probably not right now, though, because with the players dropping like flies the way they are, and plus we're accumulating quite a few yellow cards there's the potential we're going to be forced into another change a little bit further on. So I'm going to leave things as they are for now, um, just as Dembele charges through and scores a really rather good goal. I mean, that kills the tie-off there, I think, at 2-0. We, there was always the little bit of a hope that we might grab an equaliser, even though we weren't getting any shots. There was the hope that we might get back into it at 1-0. At 2-0, we can't just get a penalty and find ourselves back in the tie like like I say, it's not a big deal if we lose. I'm expecting to get knocked out. And as long as we continue to keep it tight, then I'm happy because that doesn't embarrass us then. Um, but it is another Manchester United corner and it's now 3-0. And that's the young lad they, that we just had a look at before, isn't it? Who signed the £32 million new gem, who scored on his debut. Excellent. So they've started bringing in untried kids and they're scoring against us now. That doesn't bode so well. Um, and now they've got another corner. It's 3-0. And he, Traore scrambles it clear. Um, I think he's a, he's a former Manchester United player off the top of my head. Um, I know I've just signed him, so I should know. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he is former Manchester United. So similar to Chong. Would have wanted a performance today, but obviously Chong didn't get one. This is excellent from Brivio, though. Beats his man. And Brivio does very, very well to have our first proper chance of the game. And it was all created by Brivio. Used his pace and power and direct running. And it was a it was a decent effort at the end of it as well. Now Brivio nods it down to Traore. And all of a sudden we're having attacks. That's two shots now. I wonder if we should perhaps we should bring um Beera on for DRB and go to the 4-2-3-1 and go a little bit we're not going to try and get back into the game that would be the dumbest thing ever when I've already said it doesn't matter if we lose let's just not get embarrassed let's not try and attack now because we're 4-0 down already we, we can attack all we like we're not getting back into this game all attacking is going to do is make things worse I'm almost tempted to drop back to a counter-attacking system just to avoid any more goals going in because it is slowly but surely turning into a humiliation um, I am going to take off Diaby now because of his injury. We're going to bring on McGeehan and just shuffle this midfield around a little bit. I think we can stick Traore there. McGeehan can go in there as the playmaker and Traore just as a just as a normal defensive midfielder just there. He's prob that's probably the change I should have made when... Um, who was it who got injured? New boy. When Clarkson first got injured, that's probably what I should have done then. But... I didn't. I did this instead. Let's, um, I mean, what can I even say? Get creative. It would be nice to get a goal. 
It would be nice if they stopped scoring goals. Oh, 5-0 now. Eeg. <laughs> this is... Um, I don't want to keep seeing replays. They upset me. Do we give Hornby a little bit of time up front and put Brivio out on the way? Even though Brivio's looked like the only real attacking threat we've got. Oh, my word. They have just turned it on in the second half, haven't they? Six now. They've, um, I mean, Anthony Marshall's come on to prove a point after what I did to him during the beta. He's got two goals. And to be fair, has has changed the game. Thankfully, they've now brought on Jesse Lingard, which I, I think that means they've decided not to score any more goals. So, yeah. That was um, that was a learning experience. I think what we've learned there is if we do manage to get promoted, then uh, it's going to be a horrible season next year. I'm going to I'm going to say I'm far. Yeah, that second half I think was really poor. We did very well in the first half. The second half, though, there's no excuses. I don't care how good they are. We were really poor in that second half. Now let's see the damage. Um, there you go. Humiliation for Barnsley. Yikes. Clarkson, who we've just spent all that money on, is out for six weeks, which makes matters worse. Chong, out for a month, makes matters worse. Ugh. And Privy Ho, despite looking good and all the things I said about him before, I think we need Hornby back up front for the next game because Privy is not playing well at all. I thought he'd been scoring all the goals on this run. Let me double check. He's certainly been involved. It's been... Oh, Hornby's got a few coming off the bench, presumably. Uh, right. Back to the drawing board. I mean, as long as we win in the league, it's a positive episode. This is interesting. First, first interview I've been offered since I've been at Barnsley. Um, I don't think I have any interest in going to Burnley. Um... Yeah, they don't seem to have any more money to spend than we do. They're a three-star reputation club. We are a three-star reputation club. I think I can comfortably just decline that interview. We don't need sideways moves. Just to give you an idea of what we're up against in the championship, um, wages-wise, we're only the 14th highest paying wages people um, in the division, and we're trying to compete with these guys but this one's even more ridiculous okay so those two are players who were both leaving the championship but this guy Aston Villa are fourth we're competing with them for playoffs and they've spent 30 million pounds on a 19 year old wonder kid Swansea have spent 41 and a half million pounds just in this window they're top of the league they're top of the league and still felt the need to spend £40 million in this window. What I mean, West Brom, how much have they spent? Their third, West Brom, have spent £27 million this season. Eight players coming in in this window. We can't compete with that. Oh, we sold a player, by the way. Um... We did try and bring in some youngsters, but as usual, they went elsewhere. Um, are they even showing on there anymore? Uh, no, there were a couple of youngsters. I'm not. There's at this point, there's no point even showing you because they just keep going to other clubs. Um, Jack Byrne, though, um, he went to Derby. Um, four hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. We brought him in for two hundred forty-five thousand. Never really played him. He was our fourth choice right winger. And we sold him on for a profit. I think that's a good little piece of business over the course of a year. Um, and money certainly looking a lot better. With that transfer fee plus the Manchester United um, FA Cup money means money looks a little bit better again. Although we still don't look at the projection because it's scary business. Uh, but yeah, transfer window has closed. We didn't bring anyone else in. And now we go and try and beat Middlesbrough and force our way up into this area full of really stupidly rich teams right big changes for the Middlesbrough game then partly 
Uh, they're forced on us because we've had quite a few injuries and things suddenly appear. Clarkson obviously injured. Chong got injured in the last game. Traore has now picked up an injury as well. Um, and Beera has also picked up an injury. Um, we're also going to our more attacking system, the 4 2 3 1. Middlesbrough struggling down in the bottom half of the table. Let's go there. Well, have them come to us and let's try and beat them. So Woodman comes back in in goal. Um, Hilson had a good game until he let in six goals. I think that's the best way of describing the Manchester United experience. A back fourth, Burke, Stevens, Tanganga and Williams. So your first opportunity to see Tanganga for us. Uh, Rimanotta and Mowat in midfield. Wilkes, Slattery and Brown then behind Hornby up from um, Brivio. Just going to sit down there and think about what he's done if he's not scoring for a little while. And um, despite me speaking so highly of him, at the start of this episode... It doesn't take long to change my mind um, unless it's a player I've formed. A bit of, <laughs> that's like the opposite of what's true. We all know that's the opposite of what's true. Um, right, we're going to assertively avenge what happened last time. Um, interestingly, one of the youth players that we were trying to sign over the uh, over the last week of that transfer window did end up going to Middlesbrough. So Middlesbrough considered a bigger club than us, clearly. Uh, but Tanganga has just put us 1-0 up after four minutes. It's a corner from Slattery, a dominant header from Tanganga. And there you go. That's uh, that's two players fresh into the team who weren't part of the Manchester United experience have decided to keep our good run of form going because they're two players who have been involved in that good run of form. Slattery back to Williams. Williams nods. In fact, it was Hornby nodded down to Brown and Brown now is his 10th goal of the season and we're six minutes in. We're scoring goals so fast I can't keep up with them. It's 2-0 to Barnsley after six minutes and I think I noticed that we are now up in the playoff positions as things stand. That was lovely from Hornby. That's, that's why he's in the team. Because he's got that. That's what Brivio doesn't have. They're two very different types of striker. And in actual fact, I think they'd make a really good partnership. But I just, I can't think of a way to play two strikers while still getting the best out of the players we've got in other positions. So for now, we're not going to get to see them as a partnership. But I think they would be a very good front two. Slattery with another corner. These corners are causing all manner of problems in the penalty area for Middlesbrough. And... Uh, We've got a free kick now. Similar kind of situation. Slattery yeah, finds Stevens and Stevens heads just over. What I was trying to tell you about before all those highlights is we did have another offer from Derby for one of our players. They offered £7 million for Williams. What they're doing with these players, though, they're making non-negotiable offers and then offering just below their value. I, has that ever worked? For, I mean, imagine imagine if they were player controlled and that's how they were doing their transfers. I don't know about you lot, but I regularly have to play have to pay well over what someone's shown value is to be able to get hold of them, especially if they're a player who aren't on the transfer list. They're a player that are regularly playing games for their club. It's a club at the same sort of level. You always have to go above their value. But for whatever reason, Derby, despite having all that money from the player they sold to Manchester United, they've got £30 million knocking around, offered us below market value for McGeehan, below market value for Williams, and made them both non-negotiable. So they were just instant rejects. Um, I've got no interest in pushing these players out to those clubs, so I wasn't going to offer them back to them for a higher price. If they're not going to negotiate as part of the offer, then they can do one. Um, and suffer for it. I don't know where. They're down in 12th place at the moment. It's their own fault. They could have had two of our players to help them climb up the table if they hadn't been so silly with the way they made their offers. Um, this is broken again, isn't it, this league table? It's the the single most frustrating thing about FM20. Q loads of people telling me, no, Kev, there's much more frustrating things than this. To me, it's the single most frustrating thing about FM20, the fact that these don't stay where you put them. It abs... Where? absolutely breaks my mind that I, I'll put that there now and then next the next match we play it'll be tucked underneath there again and it's often not been a big deal while we've been at Barnsley but now we are pushing towards the top top six or in the top six as it stands we need to actually be able to see the full top six again so we need we need thing we need to keep adjusting that Williams is in cross towards Wilkes Wilkes it could have headed that anywhere else in the universe and it ends up in the back of the net. But he picks the one spot that their goalkeeper was lying on, which, I mean, that's that's where we need Chong on the pitch in those kind of positions. But obviously we're going to be without him for a little while. Woodman makes the save at the other end and that should... What, what's happened? Oh, it's an offside. I thought it was half time the way the play just stopped and he walked away from it. Um, Woodman again uh, plays it forward to Stevens. 
I think we are we going to score a wonder goal here or Middlesbrough are going to take it off us and get an equaliser? They're going to take it off us and get an equaliser. Now I understand. Oh, Woodman makes the save again. Excellent work. Um, Clear-cut chances-wise, it's been a fairly even game, but for everything else, we've been much the better team. More shots, more goals, far more possession. Don't get complacent. I am, I am of a mind to switch to the 4-3-3, probably with 20, 25 minutes to go if we're still 2-0 up. And uh, just stick a holding midfielder on at the expense of Slattery, just because it seems like the sensible thing to do. Middlesbrough, I think, are a little bit below their level at the moment, down in 19th place as it stands. Um, but as we've seen from the fact they're still able to tempt players to join them rather than us, they are still a big team who probably shouldn't be down there. Hornby just learned to shoot straight. He would be by far and away the top scorer in this division if he could just shoot which I guess is something you could say about a lot of footballers. If, if they were good at scoring goals, they'd score more goals. But oh, everything else about his game looks so good. But then he gets into these situations and more often than not, just hits it wide. He isn't even testing the goalkeeper. Most of his goals are coming from headers and, and on the end of crosses. And like in, it seems that if he has time to think, he messes it up. He needs to just act on instinct. We need to teach him to act on instinct more, even when he has time to think. Just teach him not to. Perhaps we need to get him drunk before matches or something, just so he doesn't waste any time thinking out there. Wilkes is having a terrible game, by the way. Um, I'm thinking Brivio, maybe, to come on on that left-hand side um, and give him a little bit of time playing as the inside forward, which is actually the role that he was playing when he forced his way into the team. And then I thought, well, yeah, you're playing well out there. Let's play you up front. I never learned. Mavididi. Remember when we all thought he was going to be quite good and I've not really given him the time of day all year. I probably need to sell him because I think he probably has some value. He's not a bad striker, but we've got two that are better, I think. Woodburn's had a very good game in goal today, by the way. Very dominant sweeper-keeper performance, which I'm enjoying very much. Ball over the top for Hornby to chase. Oh, he's got thinking time, though. He does test the keeper this time. And Wilkes picks up the scraps. There's Hornby with the header, though. See? Much more effective when he's got no time to think about it. Just hits him in the head. Wilkes has got to come off. Look at the state of this. I've not seen such a poor performance for a long time. We'll bring Brivio on on that left-hand side to play as an inside forward. I don't normally make an early substitution like that, but if when we're 2-0 up and someone's going into the red for their performance, that is a worrying sign. Right, we are going to switch to this system. We're going to take off Slattery. Um, we're going to bring on... Am I going to make the same mistake again, or am I going to bring on McGeehan? I'm going to bring on McGeehan and put Mowat back there. And I think we're going to do... We'll just leave him as the playmaker. Or is McGeehan better there doing... No, I think I want McGeehan further forward, where he's going to have more of an impact on the game. Um, I can't believe we've got a £10 million midfielder that we, we start so infrequently. He's our captain as well. He just... I, I want to say he doesn't really fit in the team, but I know, we all know, he could play in that Riminotta role and do it better, probably. But for whatever reason, and it might just be that we still have the whole McGeehan and, and um, Moet can't play together thing. As, as a team, we win more games when Riminotta is in the side. He obviously is offering something outside of his actual ability as a footballer. Perhaps he's a natural leader. Or perhaps Moet and McGeehan just can't play together and it affects the whole team performance. But for whatever reason, I can't have them in the same team. It just doesn't seem to work, even though there are two best midfielders. Moet, with a, I mean, I thought that was a cross. It's hit the inside of the post. And their keeper, I mean, I don't know why their keeper's not just turned around and grabbed that. He's kicked it clear. Very strange goalkeeping, but that looked like a cross and it had so much bend on it, it very nearly ended up in the back of the net. Um, right, we're going to make our final substitution. You know what? I am going to give Mavididi a little bit of time to come on and play up front. 10 minutes. He is a natural pressing forward. Let's give him 10 minutes playing there. It might be, it might even be his first appearance of the season. Let's see if he can earn himself a shot in the team. And there's Hornby, his 14th goal of the season. No time to think, just the way he likes it. Off his head. <laughs> he needs to be. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that'll be Kev, that was brilliant. Well done linking all of your previous comments about him together. Excellent work. And Brown to Hornby. It's a lovely header. It's 3-0. 
And if we haven't already dropped praise, we need to drop some now. I think we already had, but I think we deserve more. Moa, in swinging corner. It's nodded down. Riminot is there, um, but he can't quite divert it towards the goal. And Middlesbrough looking to get a little bit of a break on here, but Stevens is having none of it. Lovely tackle from Stevens. Tanganga plays it all the way back to Woodman, who very calmly gives it back to Tanganga. Um, gets it back again, though, so this time finds Mavididi, um, who back to McGeehan and Brivio to Riminotta. Plays it forward, looking for Brown. We've got options in the middle. Um, Cross comes in. Mavididi has scored his first goal of the season. There you go. Perhaps perhaps he's the answer playing in this system. We're 4-0 up all of a sudden. This is some lovely, lovely football that we're playing. Somehow, as the last couple of goals have gone in, we've fallen out of the playoffs again. And um, I suggest it's probably more to do with other results than what we've been up to. That's a lovely finish from Mavididi, though. And it's, a, again, a different kind of striker to what we've got anywhere else on the pitch because he was able to take his time and place the ball into the back of the net. That's a different kind of goal from what we've seen from Hornby or Brivio all year. Mowat now. Are we looking for number five? This is ridiculous. We've gone from the just the horrific performance against Manchester United to probably... I mean, this might be the best you've ever seen this Barnsley team play. I've seen glimpses of this in games that I've played between episodes. But actually, in an episode, have they played this well at any point? 61% possession, 36 shots, 17 of them on target, four goals, none conceded. That is a good performance. Um, yeah, I am pleased with that performance today. And I think if we can continue playing like that for the rest of this season... We have got to be in with a, a chance of these playoffs. Um, let's look at the league table. League table has us seventh place, one point outside of the playoffs, but Hull do have that game in hand. And if we look at our schedule for the rest of the season, um, oh, still a lot of football to be played. Right, we will come back for the next episode somewhere around here and see from there how we're getting on. Maybe Leeds would be interesting because it's a local derby. So perhaps we'll do Cardiff and Leeds in the next episode and then and then see if we're in a promotion hunt or not. It would be lovely if we were. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos and thank you very much for watching.